Hello. In the last episode, we learned about customizing text styles. Today, we are going to talk about hatch patterns. They are called fill patterns in Revit and they are of two types, drafting and model. Today, in this episode, we are going to talk about the difference between the two, which one to use when and how to customize them. So let's dive in. Step one of understanding hatch patterns is to understand where they are applied in Revit. They are applied in either 3D or 2D. When you're working with 3D elements, for example, this is a callout of a toilet detail, and this element that you see is a floor which is created in 3D. When you create a 3D element, you assign several materials to them. For example, this is a multi-layer floor whose bottommost part is of made of earth. And when you select this particular material, the material already understands what hatch patterns to use when they are in projection and when they are cut in a section. The earth material is already assigned to it. This is a drafting fill pattern given to the earth material. So whenever the earth material is in sections, this hatch pattern is automatically going to appear in that view. If you're working in 2D views, for example, this is a drafting view, which does not have any relation to the 3D model. There are no 3D elements here. This is a typical floating detail created using the fill region tool under annotation tab. The fill region tool allows you to create 2D hatch pattern regions in the areas where you don't have a 3D element. This earth pattern that you see here is a 2D element. If you go to the type properties of this fill region, you'll see which fill patterns have been assigned to them. For example, here, if you go in, you'll see that this particular drafting fill pattern of earth has been assigned to this. So as far as you're working with 3D elements, you really don't have to worry too much about the hatch patterns. As far as you've given a material to that particular 3D element, those hatch patterns will be visible automatically. And for those areas where you don't have the reference of a 3D element, but you want to create a detail in 2D, you can take advantage of the tool called Fill Region in the Annotation tab. Now the step number two, to understand the difference between a drafting and a model fill pattern. To demonstrate this, I've created a drafting view, but I've created two rectangles of filled regions, one with a square three millimeters of drafting fill pattern, and another one which square 300 millimeters of model fill pattern. Now, my drafting view is at one is to one scale. If I measure my fill pattern, for example, from one point to the other, this is exactly 300 millimeters. Let's go ahead here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. In the drafting fill patterns, I'm not able to really snap the way I was able to do it in the model fill pattern, but I'm going to try and measure this to be around exactly three millimeters. So on one is to one scale, my drafting fill pattern is at three millimeters and this one at 300. Now let me change the scale to one is to 10. You'll see that my model fill pattern remains consistent with 300 millimeters in relation to the scale, whereas my drafting fill pattern has increased to about 30 millimeters. Let's change the scale to 1 is to 100 now. Again, you'll see that my model fill pattern remains consistently 300 millimeters, whereas my drafting fill pattern has now changed equivalent to a 300 millimeter on 1 is to 100 scale. So this is the main difference between a model and a drafting fill patterns. Model fill patterns represent the real values of real life construction. For example, when I have a 300 by 300 millimeters of a tile, I would use a model fill pattern to represent that. So it is going to remain consistent in relation with the model geometry. So if you're using a model fill pattern, you're also able to press tab and select individual lines, move them like you would do for a real life tiles. I could also use my align tool in order to realign my fill pattern to represent the actual tiles in real life. The drafting fill pattern, however, cannot be snapped, cannot be selected individually, or cannot be aligned to a particular reference. The drafting fill patterns, however, are annotative. So they would adjust themselves to the scale in a way that they remain consistent on paper. 
For example, this drafting fill pen is designed to consistently remain 3 millimeters on paper regardless of the scale. So whichever scale that you print your drawings, they will always be readable because they will always have 3 millimeters difference between the two lines. So drafting fill patterns are useful when you want to create a fill pattern that remains consistent on paper. Model fill patterns are useful when you want to create fill patterns that represent the real life model geometry. Now step number three, let's customize the fill patterns. Let's go to the manage additional settings and go to the fill patterns. This is the where you can either edit an existing fill pattern or create a new one. Let's say I want to create a new fill pattern that has about three millimeters by six millimeters of rectangular hatch. So to do this, I'll go into my drafting fill pattern type, create a new one and call it, call it rectangular. 3 mm by 6 mm and I'm going to use my cross hatch option if you're creating something which is with parallel lines you can also use that option I'm going to use my cross hatch option I don't want any angle so I'm going to make the angle zero the line spacing for the first line is going to be three millimeters and line spacing on the other direction line spacing two is going to be six millimeters so it's going to have a rectangle if you want this rectangle to be vertical and not horizontal you can just give an angle of 90 degree to that hatch pattern and i'm going to say okay to this and i'm going to apply to this fill region the fill pattern that i've used so i'm going to edit the type duplicate my fill region and call it rectangle three by six and i'm going to use my foreground fill pattern as the one that i created as rectangular three mm by six mm going to say okay to this so if I change my scale you will see that drafting fill pattern adjusts itself in a way that this remains three millimeters by six millimeters on paper now let's create a model fill pattern let's say I want to create a tiles of about 300 by 600 millimeters I'll go into my additional settings fill patterns go to the model pattern type and create a new one and I'm going to call it rectangular tiles of about 300 by 600 mm. I'm going to use the same way cross hatch. I'm going to make this 90 degrees. And I'm going to create the line spacing one as 300 millimeters. So you see the difference between a drafting and a model. In the drafting fill pattern, we use three millimeters, which is the dimension on the paper. Whereas here, we are using real life values. So I'm going to make the 600, 300 by 600 millimeters. I'm going to say OK to this. I'm going to take this fill region, edit the type and duplicate, call it rectangular tiles of 300 by 600. And I'm going to use my fill pattern that is rectangular tiles that we just created. Say OK to this. I'm going to increase my fill region a little bit in order to see the tiles properly. If I change the scale to 1 is 200, you'll see that this remains consistent on whichever scale that you choose, whereas this one adjusts itself so that it remains consistent on paper. Now, this is all good as far as you want to create a fill pattern that has either parallel lines or cross hatch in it. But what if you have something which is more complex than that? What if I want a fill pattern that has wooden texture, something like this? How do I create a wooden fill pattern like that? All the fill patterns in Revit are created using the PAT file format, just the way we do it in CAD. This is where CAD and Revit align themselves. They both manage their hatch patterns using the PAT file format. So it makes it easier to bring in the CAD PAT file into Revit and use it as they are. That's the topic for our next episode. They're going to explore how to bring in a CAD PAT file and make it part of Revit's fill patterns. So please make sure that you've subscribed. Stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one.